So we're going to look at some interactive graphical demos of some basic statistical tests so that you can get a feel for how the tests behave when you uh, enter different data in them. So let's have a look at uh, the one where we look at the normal distribution, which is the classic uh, bell-shaped curve. So here's a Python window. These are demos written in Python using the SciPy and Matplot the modules, which are it's all completely free software, and there's links in the uh, code and the uh, demos you can download from link, which is in the below the video, uh, below the YouTube video. So you can see I'm just adding different points, and uh, if I click on an old point, then it deletes it. So I can just see how the the normal distribution changes as I put different data on it. And um, the mean here is shown by this big red dot, and the standard deviations are these uh, vertical lines here. And uh, you can see how the data moves around. Now, in general, about 68% uh, of the data will be b between one standard deviation from the mean, and around 95% uh, within two standard deviations. And uh, if I put lots and lots of uh, points here around the middle, and eventually you'll start to see some of these three standard deviation marks. You can see they're very, very tiny, and in fact only only um, a tiny part of the distribution is more than three standard de deviations from the mean. In fact, about 99.7% of the data is within that range. So uh, you can get a feel for how data is distributed uh, with respect to the normal distribution. So if I click outside the axis here and I reset it, a couple of uh, intuitive things that you can see when you get to play with the data in this way is, so for, suppose we only have two points, then um, the mean is exactly halfway between them. In fact, each point is exactly one standard deviation from the mean when you just have two. So that's, that's one way of visualizing what a standard deviation looks like. And as you um, change the distribution of your data, then um, the, uh, the normal curve that fits that moves around as well. And uh, the total area under this curve is always the same because this is the total probability which always adds up to one. And um, you can see that when you have just a small amount of data, just a few points, if I put in a new point, say over here, that makes a big difference. Let me just click on it again to delete it. See the mean moves a lot there. So the, you don't have a very stable estimate of the mean when you only have a few data points. Um, and the variance changes a lot too, but if I I put in a lot bunch more data, so I keep the mean around the same. And then I put in a whole bunch more points here. Okay, so mean and standard deviation are around the same. But now if I put in this extra point, so the mean only changes a little bit. And so this is a very general um, idea in statistics that the more data you have, the better an estimate you have of the mean, and uh, the less an outlier will change things. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, the next example, which uh, shows some of those ideas, and that is looking at a t-test. In this case, just uh, a one-sample t-test, where we're going to take a bunch of points, and we're going to see um, whether those points are statistically, their mean is statistically different from zero. Um, now, what's shown in the red line here is the 95% confidence interval. And if you have a look at the code that makes this, uh, which is uh, you can download from the link just below this video, then it talks a little bit about how you make a confidence interval. Now, um, the point of these demos is really just to uh, get an intuitive feel interactively for how, uh, just wipe that there, for how data behaves with these tests. Um, if you want to look at with the actual equations for calculating mean, variance, standard deviation, t-tests, then uh, you know you really couldn't do better than to look at something such as Khan Academy, which has nothing to do with me. It's just a beautiful series of tutorial videos made by this guy called uh, Khan, which is just excellent. Um, but this is a slightly different approach, looking uh, interactively at things. Now, um, the, in the uh, labels on the axes here, some of the uh, statistical uh, test values are shown. So the t-score and uh, the p-value, this is the um, probability of getting uh, uh, that t-value if the um, true population distribution actually had a mean of zero. Now, uh, 
what do I mean by that? Well, suppose I have a few points, okay? Well, I only have a very few points here, and so I don't really have a very good idea of where the actual true mean is. So there's some great population out there that we're sampling from, and all we know at the moment is, okay, we have these four points from the sample. Well, given these four points, where do we think that the actual true population mean is? Well, you know, our best guess is it's the mean of these points, which is this big red dot here, but it could be anywhere in this 95% confidence interval. So 95% of the time, that population mean is going to be somewhere in here. Now, we can get a much better estimate of that mean, of the, of the greater population mean, if we start to sample more points. So if we just put in more points here, then you'll see that I'm keeping the mean about the same, but look how those confidence intervals are shrinking. And so now, in fact, uh, let me get rid of a few of those points. So the confidence interval, the confidence interval is, uh, now the confidence interval is just about kind of touching the line here. So we're almost 95% sure uh, that our mean is uh, greater than zero, but not quite. So in fact, the p-value is still a little bit above 0.05 here, and I just put in a couple more points. And now you see this has passed the standard statistical threshold of 0.05, so now we can say, okay, this mean we really do think is greater than zero. So um, you know, let's reset this. So there's, there's different, I just clicked outside the axis, so there's different ways of being more and more confident that your, um, that your mean is actually uh, different from zero or whatever it is that you're testing it against. So one way is to have small variance. So I might not have very many points here, but you see they're all kind of close together. So, you know, I'm really confident that the mean is going to be in this, this tiny little domain here, but I only have to put in, you know, one outlier point and look, you know, look how much the uh, confidence interval expands, you know. So it shows that I don't really have that good an idea of where the mean is when I just have a sample of four or five points and we can click on that point again to delete it. You see it makes a huge difference. Okay, but if I have a lot more points now, it's a very similar idea to what it showed with the normal distribution. The more points you have, the more confident you can be. So if I add a couple of outlier points over here, see I actually have to add, if I, if I add enough, eventually this confidence interval is gonna hit zero and you'll see that the p-value crosses above what's you know the kind of arbitrary but standard threshold of 0.05 there you see so now so now it actually took a lot of points for me to be less clear about where the mean was so that's the one sample t-test so you know i just kind of find that it's helpful just to play around with the data so that's that's what i'm hoping that these uh these python scripts uh will be useful for let's have a look at the two sample t-test where we're actually um, looking at two groups and trying to decide if the mean of one group is different from the other. Um, by the way, the, the web page where you can download these scripts from, uh, there's also MATLAB versions of them as well. Um, I'm showing the Python ones here because Python is completely free, and um, so that's you know anyone can use it anyway. You don't need to buy a license. So if I click on this left-hand side here, then I get these light blue points. That's group A, and uh, if I click on the the right-hand side here, I get these black points as group B, and the test that's being run is uh, seeing um, what's the uh, p-value of uh, the two means being different. Now, um, the confidence intervals, again, are showing a 95% confidence interval for each individual group, so if I throw in a couple of points on here, all of a sudden I have a huge confidence interval range for this group A, and I no longer, you know, there's tiny, tiny t-value, and there's virtually, uh, you know, it's a very high p-value, so I have very little confidence now that these two means are different, which, you know, kind of makes sense, because look how, how much overlap there is between the two groups. But um, if I say get rid of this outlier point by, by clicking on here, now I can be more confident that the, the groups have uh, different means. You see that this uh, passes the significance test. So again, you can just kind of interactively play with this. I can, you know, reset it by clicking outside. And I, you know, hopefully this will help you to give an intuitive, get an intuitive feel for how two sample t-tests behave. Okay, there's one more demo, uh, which uh, is looking at uh, correlation. And uh, correlation is something uh, you know we encounter all the time. But again, it's easy to um, 
you know, just see a, a correlation value or p-value and not necessarily have a feel for what that actually looks like in the data. Now, the correlation is really just measuring how well can I draw a straight line through these points. Well, if I only have two points, of course, I can always draw a perfectly straight lines with them. So here I have my correlation of one point nor, which has a, a infinitely small p-value, which is um, NaN means not a number. If I put on a few more points here, you can see I still have a very nice high correlation. It's highly significant correlation. And it's a positive correlation. Let me just click outside the axes here, uh, make a negative correlation. Uh, so here you can see there's a, a nice uh, significant negative correlation. Now, if I have a much more kind of cloud, round cloud shape of points, here you can see now I don't really have very much of a correlation at all just 0 0.006 is very, very slightly negative, but it's not meaningfully negative because look at the p-value of it, it's almost 1. There's, there's no reason whatsoever to say that there's any correlation going on here because it's basically just a round cloud of points. If I put in enough points that kind of have a you know, positive correlation to them, see now I have positive correlation of r equals 0.45, and you can see that's actually significant now. But if you look at it, you know, it is still kind of just a cloud of points, but if you look, you can just about see there's a kind of tendency of them to go up in this direction. And that's actually significant. And that shows that when you have lots of points, it's actually very easy to get a significant correlation, even if it's not incredibly clear what's happening in the data. So if I just have, say, you know, five or six points, um, uh, look, I've got a correlation of quite high correlation, very high correlation of 0.77 here. Um, I put in a couple of points a little further away, get rid of one or two of these. See, now I've got a nice high correlation of 0.64, but it's not very significant because I don't have very many points. And uh, if I throw in an outlier point over here, it's going to completely kill that correlation, you see. So this again shows that you have to be uh, very careful with correlations to actually kind of eyeball your data. Let me delete that point by clicking on it again. See? So, you know, it just takes one point to make a big difference with correlation of between 0.64 and put a point up here, it goes just down to 0.2. So that one point makes a huge difference. Now, another instance where outliers, let me click to reset here, another instance where outliers can make a big difference in which where you really want to look at your data. And this is an example uh, from a very nice illustration called Anscombe's Quartet, which there's a link to the Wikipedia page for that in the code itself. You can take a look at it. So, um, so he, uh, Anscombe comes up with a few different ways in which you can get a correlation that looks quite high. Uh, but they may not, when you actually eyeball data, they may not look the same. Okay, so here I have a little cloud of points here, and there's basically no correlation. You know, there's, the line's kind of flat, the p-value is 0.88. Look what happens if I put a point up here, way out here. Okay, suddenly, bang, okay, I've got a correlation of 0.9. I've got an extremely low p-value. Okay, but really what I have is just a kind of randomly shaped cloud of points and one outlier way over here. And if I get rid of that outlier by clicking on it again, the correlation goes from like nothing to a huge value just from a single outlier. And uh, that's that can happen in correlation, so you need to be careful with that actually. Just because you say, aha, my data has a correlation of 0.9, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's really something going on and it's really good to actually eyeball and plot it. And I think that playing with the data in this kind of interactive demo way can help to show that. Another nice example from Anscombe's Quartet is where you can have something like uh, like this, where there's actually you know, a very meaningful pattern of the dots so here that form this kind of nice clean curve. Okay. But there's really not much correlation here, because remember, a correlation, the standard correlation measure just means how well can I draw a straight line through this data. Okay, well, It's clear there's a very clear pattern in this data that follows this beautiful curve, but you can't draw a very good straight line through it. So if you say, okay, I don't have a significant correlation, you know, oh, I guess there's no relation between this data. Well, there is a very clear X and Y relation here. You know, it looks a little bit like the path that a ball might follow in the air when you throw it. In the parabolic path, but that but that clear pattern just isn't being uh, captured by our correlation line. So again, there's a good reason for uh, eyeballing the data. So those are some uh, Python scripts, and um, you know, please uh, feel free to take a look at them. The code is uh, full of comments, and uh, the variable names are all quite meaningful. So hopefully, um, it will be relatively self-explanatory. And uh, there's also MATLAB versions as well. 
Anyway, if you find this useful, I'd love to hear your comments. You can comment on the video below or send me an email. Um, happy exploring.